En tiempos recientes, la privacidad ha sido un tema que ha generado mucha polémica para todos nosotros. ¿Cómo podemos realmente proteger lo nuestro y nuestra información privada en este cambiante mundo digital? Hoy nos acompaña Oscar Ziepsis, CEO y cofundador de Alter, un servicio de mensajería privada y encriptada que trata de resolver los problemas de privacidad a los cuales nos enfrentamos actualmente. Hello, dear people of the Cryptoverse. It's a pleasure once again to be here with you. Today we have Oscars, aka Mr. Freeman. How are you? Hello. I'm fine, thanks. What about you guys? We're doing great. We're doing great. We're doing awesome. So Mr. Freeman here is the CEO of Alter, which is a privacy messaging system. And Mr. Freeman, we would like to start if you can tell us a little bit about yourself. Like, how was your crypto trajectory? What's your story? A little bit of your background. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks. Um, actually, first of all, thank you for having me here. And definitely uh, a warm welcome to your community from uh, from my side as well. Uh, my name is Oscar. I'm the CEO of Confident Falter. Uh, personally, I started in crypto in 2017 uh, when the big boom was uh, kind of uh super hyped about everything and uh, i i remember that i bought some bitcoin and i bought some lit litcoin as well litecoin uh but i bought it at the top so um that was the oh, most uh, worst um <laughs> worst case scenario for me um so basically i lost definitely 50 of everything that i invested there um it wasn't so much but that was like kind of my all savings and i was like <laughs> crap yeah like uh, uh but yeah uh but yeah i mean uh, that was like kind of my uh, rookie mistake but everyone has those so i think uh it, it was kind of chill but then i kind of uh a bit disembarked then i started to learn more like what is cryptocurrencies what is blockchain uh then i started to kind of work on <coughs> in a <coughs> in a standard job i would say <laughs> um And then I put like in the background everything. Uh, but in 2020, I started to kind of get back into the crypto and blockchain because I think that that was a breaking point, another one. But then I learned that mm -hmm. you need to keep up with the news and uh, not be yeah. late. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. yeah that, <laughs> so that, that 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 was the second entry point. And then basically in 2021, at the beginning, I started to think of like how um, how people are actually using blockchain in general. Uh, I'm always about the privacy. So I started to learn actually if there's like kind of like networks who are privacy oriented. So I learned about Monero. I learned about Pirate Chain from um, uh, how it's called from the Komodo. Yeah, they're coming from Komodo and all the community. Uh, and then, of course, I learned about Zika Network, Zcash, so all those things. Um, I connected with all those networks and kind of discussed about like all these things. And uh, definitely, one point of break, breaking point was for for myself personally in 2020, end of it, uh, about the Gmail. Once the services were like kind of down for seven hours. So nobody mm -hmm. could connect with anyone and the businesses also couldn't like use it. So they generated quite a lot of like lo losses at that day. Uh, so I started to kind of um, dig into the technological side. And if there are some kind of like decentralized services for replacing like email or replacing mm -hmm. just a standard messenger. But at the same time, I looked into like some privacy things, uh, whether they are storing your data, uh, how the privacy policy looks, because I mean, Everybody is just not reading and they just click like confirm, like yeah, I don't accept care. terms just and conditions. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, because it uh, I, actually our, our world is so annoying that you are being uh, distracted always with either 
uh, spams, with newsletters, with 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 offers, with uh, Telegram scams, and so so many things that we are so we have given away so much things to to these guys outside that we even don't know like who possess possess our data, how much they have sold to us. Uh, to, uh, sold our data to someone else uh, just to use these marketing tools. I mean, it's just uh, and and yeah, that 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 was my kind of like personal things why I kind of entered blockchain more in 2020 and to explore all of these things. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, you got that right on the spam thing. Like uh, I could say I I receive like from 50 to 100 emails a day through all my emails, yeah. and I read like a two a day, an average. And I don't read mm. emails every day because I, I go in and I see this is all spam. This is nothing that I want to know about. And uh, and it takes so much time to be unsubscribing to everything because mm. the velocity in which you unsubscribe to things is uh, slower than the velocity that you're subscribing to all the things that you, mm. you just want to look into a page and it says like, oh yeah, but you have to put your email if you want to see. And uh, and then yeah. of course you're gonna yeah. start receiving like 15 emails and yep it's it's very distracting exactly. and 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 when you ask them like where did you get it they're silent like yeah. uh, because there was like a huge um, company that sent me a newsletter I definitely know that I didn't use the email for subscriptions so. Uh, and I asked them, like, guys, like, I'm under GDPR. Do you know that? Well, like, you need to explain where to get that email. Nobody responded to my email. Like, nobody. So I have listed so many cases that I could sue and uh, prove something wrong, you know. <laughs> yeah. But, of course, like, I don't have the money and interest to go to the court cases. And it takes lots of years to even win a case. So... And that's how our so-called government side is set up, that you're going to be wrecked at any given moment. <laughs> that That's interesting because I, I thought that it was, I don't know, kind of easier. Uh, we, we we don't live there, we don't, but we have to be able to understand what is the GDPR, right? Uh, in order to send emails to mm -hmm. people that live in Europe. So I really thought it was more... Uh, difficult to to do those kind of stuff but if you're telling me that it's gonna take you time and effort and money and maybe you're gonna win the sue it's it i don't know it's it's like you say it, it may not be as easy so why would you waste your time on that uh maybe just block them and that's it it's easier yeah, that's right. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, that that's the so-called approach to anyone here. Like, uh, people are like saying that, hey, GDPR will uh, secure their data and everything else. No, it's uh, bullshit. Yeah. People are still going behind the backs and selling it, and they don't care about it because they know exactly these steps that you'll never prove it that they have sold it. They will never prove it that. Uh, you receive that message actually because you need to verify that you have received that particular email from that uh, part. So, I mean, yeah, oh, in general, it sucks to be yeah. uh, a, a human, I would say. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just like a good behavior protocol, but that's it. It's not like a real yeah. enforced law all the time. And even if you if you need the the final user to be the one who, who starts the the suing part and all the legal part yeah you're, you're not gonna have enough uh, participation of the people it's it's easier to just block as you said and that's it mm -hmm. yeah definitely exactly and that's when privacy comes in and that's why that's so important i imagine that that's why you got into building a protocol that is designed for, for privacy and private messaging specifically, which brings me to my second question, which would be, what is private and secure messaging? Um, I will not relate to Alter at the moment, but um, in my mind, private and secure messaging is that first of all, uh, when you create a profile, nobody asks anything about you. Like that's the standard way of doing things. Uh, you don't need any phone number. You don't need to provide anything except that you just register 
if you, if there's a paywall or something else, you just pay. Uh, preferably, it is crypto and it is privacy mm -hmm. coins. Like so, nobody actually sees who is that. Uh, and 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 next one is of course, are they using encryption? Are they uh, storing some data that you provide there uh, or generate inside of the platform? So they need to be super strict uh, and clear about it. If they cannot provide that uh, one sentence that we don't collect any data, mm -hmm. it's not a good service anymore. Like definitely, if there's a long pages of privacy policies where there shouldn't be, uh, they're full of shit. Um, the same with Telegram, the same with Signal. Um, yeah, I mean, they're all asking these things and still people are uh, believing that it is the best for them. Uh, not even speaking about the emails, I mean. <laughs> um, yeah, and, and the most important thing is, of course, if you own the uh, encryption keys, uh, because uh, if, like, if like the project is open source, uh, it, it still doesn't mean that it is safe for you to use uh, because open source just means that they have revealed the code that uh, they have mm -hmm. like kind of you using it but you'll never guess or know what is exactly on the production on the server environment uh, the only way perhaps there could be a auditor who could audit the code an actual production server uh, and then give the so-called uh, uh, summary report that, hey, yes, we confirm that this is okay to use because they are not interpreting anything inside. But um, you, you don't see those cases, actually. So, so the best way is just to give out the encryption key to the user. Uh, and, and we have taken all these steps uh, inside for Alter. So we have uh, created... Uh, alter in such way so people can trust it because we are giving the trust. We are giving you the freedom of speech. We are giving you the privacy. We are giving you the security because we have given everything that we have on your side and we don't collect any data on you. Uh, and also the encryption keys is the part of it because uh, only with them, if you own it and, and if you can regenerate it by yourself, it means that you are the so-called owner of everything that is going on there exactly exactly and at the end of the day people don't understand how important like this being the owner of your information and your privacy is like people underestimate how important privacy is which i imagine that was like one of your central points to get into this and i would like to ask mm. why is privacy important like first of all why is privacy important to you but why is privacy important in the digital space because uh, privacy, it's power. Privacy is you know? power. Uh, yeah, th this book I recommend everyone to read. Um, so basically, why and how you should take back control of your data. I mean, that subtitle even gives you a sort of reasoning that there's a fact that your data has been already taken. Uh, what are the exit points? How to stop that part of uh, giving the data? Like. We have already given, like, all those critics will say, hey, but we already know ab about everything about you. Yeah, of course, but you have the choice now to stop delivering more of your data in the future. So this is the way how we can do it. Uh, the book itself reveals, like, why privacy is needed, uh, giving you a live situations and describing why you should think about if you're uh, using Alexa or you're use, using Siri yeah. or you're using all these um, uh, electronic door locks and unlocks and if you have these uh, electrical light bulbs that are connected with Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, I mean, when when people will understand like what what people can do with it, it's perhaps they're gonna it's open crazy. up their mind. Yeah, exactly. Um, the same with cars. I mean, what you want to do is actually also have some physical security. Uh, mm -hmm. What does it mean that you want to have a personal garage or personal parking that is secured with cameras? But at the same time, you don't want to know that people are perhaps owning the car, that you are especially owning it. And all these things uh, are also connected into all daily lives. But because uh, if you want your privacy, of course, you're going to do things at your own 
property at your home. Uh, so mm-hmm. you don't want to have unlocked doors for neighbors or uh, without doors a house. So uh, it's it's the same with digital wall. Like we need to have all these options still there uh, to kind of uh, explain that actually physical uh, privacy is the same as in in digital wall. Like because we are uh, creating um, more data to be surveillance. Uh, since we're living in this data economy, I would say, uh, it's not capitalism, it's not anything else, it's just data economy uh, that we're forced into. So, yeah, I mean, like, price is super important. I mean, overall, like, you don't want to share your, like, I I like the example that I always provide, like, if you don't care about your privacy, please then give me your card card details now like yeah <laughs> just give me if you don't care about it just trust me just trust me that i will not use the card yeah like it's the exactly. same if you're using any service you're actually kind of trusting them not to use it but in reality if you give me the card data i would probably buy some crypto yeah exactly <laughs> 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 And you know, absolutely. You know about that uh, the credit card thing. I have a real uh, example. I don't know if it's been corrected, but uh, years ago, whenever you went into a gym here uh, in our country, they uh, there wasn't a gate uh, payment gateway provider that would give you the ability to make recurring payments out of a out of a credit card. Mm. So what mm. what would happen is that the secretary or the the receptionist would write down your credit card details on a notebook and she would once a <laughs> once a uh, month charge you using the the <laughs> very phone and uh, and that would be like and you will ask people like do you do you really accept this and they're like how else are they going to do it and, and it was like so you're trusting this people with this and, and it was it was kind of crazy because the thing is like they don't even tell you they they grab the card, but uh, they don't even tell you that they're gonna write it down. Wow. It's just like, oh yeah, uh, wow. subscribe your credit card here, and that's it. I'm like, Dude, what the fuck? But wow, yeah. Oh my god. But, uh, <laughs> it, it was like for for the yeah the lower uh, end kind of gym. Uh, I don't know the bigger ones. Uh, I know there are other ones that use I don't know, like normal online payment gateways, but yeah. The other ones were like very sketchy, and I don't want how people would. Just... I, I I would imagine if I would be an employee there taking all the credit card details, I would then quit my job and take all the info. Bye. Absolutely. Yeah. Bye, guys. It was a real pressure for that <laughs> person, <laughs> like that incentive right there all the time, and yeah, uh, it was crazy. That's crazy. And, wow. And. Uh, for the for the question that we were discussing before about the private and secure messaging, uh, and I don't know if you know uh, this answer, but maybe you do. Uh, you know how everyone is talking about how uh, on Instagram, Facebook, or WhatsApp, you say a word, let's say like dogs, and uh, it starts appearing everywhere in, in every ad. They are trying to sell you mm-hmm. a dog or dog things, right? And uh, they say the messaging and the voice uh, and, and video, everything is encrypted. Uh, and I want to understand if if the encryption is so a normal human being wouldn't be able to read what it is that you're saying because it's all encrypted, but a computer would be able to read it if they know how to uh, understand the encryption or if the encrypted uh, characters of docs would be always the same, independent on who is writing it, and you will be able to track people uh, talking about dogs just because whenever they say dog, a part of the encryption uh, hash has a little hash that, that that the computer knows that that is a word mm-hmm. dog. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't know if if it's that way. Uh, I have tried to look mm-hmm. for not really, really no, okay, not really, yeah. So. Um, each file that you provide or message, there's a unique hash that is being generated. So there's like, like there, there will be never like an identical hash. 
<clears throat> but of course, you cannot uh, tell that, for example, WhatsApp is uh, not having, uh, like, you don't never, you will never know if WhatsApp holds your keys. Again, is the, the, the thing that I mentioned before that encryption keys, application should be providing them and showing them, hey, those are your encryption keys, okay? Uh, and we don't touch them because we don't know them. It's only on your side. That's all. It's generated on that device. Uh, but for WhatsApp, yeah. for WhatsApp, for Telegram, for Signal, when you start the chat, it kind of says this is encrypted. Mm -hmm. And like, and, okay, yeah. And what I can do with this uh, so-called uh, info? Um, it doesn't say me that you are actually encrypting. If you are encrypting, do you hold the keys? If you hold the keys, then what's the point of encryption? Now I get it. Yeah. It's just, again, like a marketing side for people to uh, trust them yeah. um, and use it because, I mean, everybody using it. <laughs> yeah, so, so they kind of received the message and then they encrypt it instead of the device encrypting it and they received the encrypted message. So, yeah, like what's the point? You're totally right on that. Yeah, I mean, you're just accepting terms and conditions and then they can do whatever they want. And, whatever they want. Uh uh, especially when your phone is kind of like uh, on, on the standby, it always tracks the location, it always records you, that's why your battery draining out so quickly, because if you go to the settings, you'll see for each of, of the features, for location tracking, for uh, recording and listening, you can disable those features. But then again, you will not be able to use them at some point because it will be not so user friendly again for your for you to on on a daily basis. So, um, because the fun fact how Google Maps can show you that there's a traffic jam is because someone who was already there before they're tracking your location the, exactly uh, and 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 basically it is then presenting on the map. Yeah. Ta-da! <laughs> exactly. Yep. Exactly. It's like, like magic and absolutely like, can you tell us a little bit about Alter and what makes it what it is? Because I'd imagine, like you said, you went deep into the rabbit hole and you researched all these different platforms and then you came to a realization that you needed to create something different, right? So yeah, what is Alter? How does it solve this privacy issue? Yeah, so basically, um, I didn't saw like a solution that is giving everything to the to to user. So there's no like a non custodial platform where mm -hmm. you understand that you are actually the owner of everything, uh, and combining like with the blockchain with smart contracts, uh, that smart contract should be also uh, private. So Secret yeah. Networks uh, presents that possibility with the utility of of, of the smart contract. So. Uh, I haven't seen uh, like a, a better option at the moment on the market. So with providing such like technology, uh, and then another part is that um, it should be such a non, -cost non custodial platform that people can um, trust it without even looking at it. Uh, e when you sign up, you understand that actually you are generating the encryption keys, you are holding them, and and <clears throat> also the encryption should be connected with towards also verification with the smart contract. So. So it's not in like you cannot uh, in, in, uh, interrupt it and you cannot edit it. You cannot kind of mess around with it in a way because it has been verified. If something happens, then the hash um, will present that, you know. And yeah, so we have taken that, that approach so people can uh, be fully free and it can be, it is private by default and secure at the same time. And yeah, we want to kind of uh, take up a new way of uh, how people see the so-called privacy messengers or platforms uh, and as well for emails because we want to challenge the email sector as well in a sense that uh, uh, email as a technology cannot work anymore in this uh, uh, internet world because it's it's sold. Uh, no matter what the security layer you're going to put, it's not efficient. Like... Uh, that 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 has been proven in the last like five seven years. So I'm I'm super like kind of um, questioning myself like wh why there aren't anything new or replacing emails. So that was uh, kind of our start with with the emails, and then basically we're just adding chats, we're adding the file sharing management, uh, and also 
to adopt to the crypto native people and the projects and and yeah so we want to take in a, in the approach that user comes first we don't care about data or business models is as well connected that mm-hmm. uh, our business model is not connected to data processing it's connected to giving the utility that you need but in exchange exactly. you do some things that it gives us some revenue part so we can maintain it exactly exactly yeah that's something that happens with crypto right that it gives you a different lens to to look at things and like get off the traditional business models because like you said mm-hmm. most of the most of the things don't change because the gate gatekeepers are not wanting the system itself to change but you put your crypto mm-hmm. glasses on and then you look at things in a different way and you can understand that business can be done in a different in a different manner mm-hmm. right and how like was it something that you just came up on your own or was it one of those conversations of like having a couple of beers with someone like how did alter come to exist actually it was on my own (laughs) i just started to think about like what would be the perfect imagination of like secure and private uh communication between my family members and and friends okay uh then i started to kind of uh get down the rabbit hole like, i would say get out of the rabbit hole because i have a different sense of perspective that if you're in the rabbit hole you're uh you're this uh, so-called i support the current things meme you know yeah if you have seen yeah. that um so you need to get out of the rabbit hole to kind of see what is actually going what's happening uh yeah yeah so <laughs> In any case, yeah. So I started to look up on all these messengers as well, and uh, I it didn't it didn't um, uh, s- satisfy me internally. Like I wouldn't trust this, like one hundred percent, definitely. And uh, then I started to think of ways, like what would be the perfect combination. Like then I listed all the things, like uh, no info requested from, from when when I register. There's no privacy policies because there isn't any data storage or uh, or analysis. Uh, there should be a way how I can actually pay because in a in a secure and private way as well. Uh, only crypto can can deliver that. Uh, not a bank transfer, not a not a card can make it happen. So it's only possible with cryptocurrency. Uh, and yeah, I mean, uh, also owning the encryption keys like that that was the biggest part that I kind of. I was wondering, like, but why? I mean, if if Telegram so sec- so secure and private or Signal, but why I cannot have that? Like, it, so it's kind of crazy, actually. Uh, when I started to kind of write down all of these things and and potentially what we could um, create in a way. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I met my CTO. Um, he's also a co-founder, and we started to kind of discuss about: uh, Is it possible? Like what I have imagined in my in my head? Like, is it possible to create? <laughs> and then we started to kind of analyze a lot, uh, check different other approaches, and then basically combining the best experience because, of course, we took mm-hmm. also the mm-hmm. perfect forward uh, secrecy model from Signal because so far it's the best encryption model at the moment. But it, it is missing uh, two parts. They don't need to request phone number, plus they need to give the encryption keys and also give the possibility that users can generate their own encryption keys. And and, and third one, they're not storing them anywhere, the, the private encryption key. So <laughs> uh, all those three things like we, I wanted to improve and yeah, then we uh, realized that it is possible. So it, it's not so, of course, user-friendly when you think about mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. Because you have these extra steps on author that you need to provide the uh, author ID, password, and then encryption key every single time. So yeah, <laughs> but that, that that thing will gonna change. So uh, I, I will uh, leak some alpha here on on the call. <laughs> and you talking about that uh, makes me wonder: could alter become like the this framework in the future for private and secure messaging and maybe other uh, DApps? would mount on a framework as a mm-hmm. light label apps that could access the framework uh, where they could focus yeah, on the user interface mm-hmm. and user experience. All in the background, it's Alter's framework being used for, for the messaging. Mm, definitely, yeah. Um, 
because we want to show uh, also the corporates and companies and governments that there's a, another way around of uh, how people are communicating and uh, it involves that the data well you we'll never get hold of it so um, mm. so there are a lot of companies uh, when we talk about like lawyers especially like all these Panama papers all these things that they're going around with emails stuff like um, well, we can solve those things. I mean, I'm not promoting like um, financial schemes or rugs or what, but in general, mm -hmm. like if we just take the so-called value that you need to maintain your price and security, Alter will be the best framework to have. Yeah. Uh, once we're going to have the public API ready, we have some part already um, there. So you can have the API for standard peer-to-peer -peer messaging um, okay. So we have that API already there, but for the chats, we need to create the public uh, API so people can use it as well. Um, but yeah, uh, and also how to interact with the smart contract and how to uh, interact with wallets. Uh, so people who are like uh, non-crypto native people, they have also two options of login. The standard one that the author has already, like this long process, but it's secure, of course, and private. Uh, but not too user friendly. And then for crypto native people or who wants to integrate their own wallet, they will have the possibility to uh, one click away, just connect your wallet and log in and access it. So that's what we are okay. working currently on uh, with the Kepa wallet integration on Alter. Um, so basically, everything will be stored on your smart contract that is connected to your wallet. Um, so yeah, uh, you want to kind of enable this approach as well. Nice. That's amazing. Good things coming. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Absolutely. And how do you see it evolving even further? Like you already said that you're uh, working on the APIs and all these things, but how do you see ultra evolving in coming years? Like what would be the thing that you would like to see from your protocol? Mm. Mm -hmm. I would say that they, <clears throat> I would say that it is becoming one of the so-called niche products where millions yeah. are using, uh, connecting, uh, first of all, all the Web3 users, like crypto native people into one single communication platform. Because mm -hmm. what we are really missing is a good non-spam, less uh, phishing attempts or without even phishing attempts, uh, the communication platform where everything is on it, but at the same time, you're not being bothered. Uh, with Alter, that will be possible because with the address book feature that you currently see on, on the platform, it will work as a anti-spam and anti-phishing method. We can also add a verification method so people without providing like any IDs or what, they'll be able to kind of prove that they're, they're that person so people can trust it as well. Uh, so we're going to be eliminating completely the spam, uh, eliminating the phishing wow. attempts, uh, at the same time, um, we want to uh, add another utility, uh, mm -hmm. resolve the newsletter and subscription, since people still want to get updated on projects, but they don't like kind of trust that that email going to be circulating around yeah. a lot. <laughs> yeah, on our absolutely. side, it will not be possible at any given moment because um, well. for newsletter creators, uh, they will pay with other token to unlock the feature and buy like 100 newsletters, for example, per year or what. Uh, mm -hmm. And then uh, they they create their newsletter, uh, set it up when they're going to send it or send it directly, but there's no recipient. There will never be okay. one. How on our side works is that people from alter side on the platform, there's a, mm -hmm. there's a list. They can filter out like, I want to follow some NFT or gaming or DeFi uh, projects that are... Um, um, so-called giving out newsletters. So people who are kind of creating those newsletters, they, they will be able to create a profile, uh, what what this newsletter is about, how frequently you're going to be receiving. Uh, and then there's a, a button to subscribe. And once you're subscribed, you can also unsubscribe. So this is the only way how we can resolve it in a super simple way. And then people who are sending them, they cannot sell it. They will never know who is receiving it. Only if you click the reply to the newsletter, then you can contact and reveal your alter ID to them. Wow. 
That's nice. Okay, so there's going to be a lot of paradigm shiftings with Alter in the future. That's amazing. Oh, yeah. We're going to be moving from Discord to Alter. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Everyone go to Alter, please, guys. Uh, yeah. yeah, like you so said, sometimes upcoming... it's, it, it's difficult sometimes to onboard people, like you said, because there's a couple extra steps. But I think it was like the first time you were confirming like a transaction with your ledger or you were uh, onboarding to DeFi or something like that. Once you understand mm -hmm. how it works and understand the added value that that's going to have for you as an individual and for the people that are surrounding you and like all the networks you're building and everything, I think that's how we like get over this slope. Right of people thinking that crypto mm -hmm. is complicated and dApps are complicated, and I think that's what we need to do. Right, make it easier for people to onboard and incentivize them, and understanding what's going to happen to your data by using these applications instead of going to what you already know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, correct. Hey, uh, awesome, Oscar. I, I do have a. Uh, there was a question there, a couple of questions back that I had to you. Uh, from the perspective of a computer or a online service, whatever it is, what is the difference between a message and an email? A message and an email? Yeah. What's the difference like, uh, from a perspective of the computer? Like I received this data. Do I, is it different uh, a message or, a, or an email right now? And maybe that's why emails are slowly disappearing <laughs> because it's, not really a difference there. What? Why are still emails around? Yeah, is because it was a standard before how people communicated with each other, and second biggest reason is that you need to sign up with it. Uh, what we want to replace is that uh, platforms can will you will will be able to use the public API and set up the registration process with alter IDs. So that's like our big end goal as well. Like additionally, that we can replace um, re emails with alter ID. So basically, if you go, for example, in Binance, you can just register with your alter ID, for example. Or, or um, uh, I will not support. Never, never gonna support Facebook, for example. We'll never integrate it, and we'll never allow them to do it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, mm -hmm. for other like uh, projects who are open to to it, more than glad to use it. So, um, and that, I think that's like the next uh, good phase that people are gonna start to realize that emails are not so important because they're shit. They are shit. <laughs> yeah. Now that you mention it, like for example, l let's say that before uh, an email could have in a in a way a way to identify yourself, but right now. People can create emails that are uh, non-identifiable. Like I could just create an email right now, and it wouldn't have any uh, in personal information about myself. And I could use that email to create an account on Binance, for example, or whatever it is. And they wouldn't know. Not really. Yeah, I, they they would need my KYC to understand who who is it that I really am. So uh, if I can use a, a platform like uh, Binance or another exchange without any KYC. And then there's no really any need for uh, having an email either uh, as my yeah, as my correct. access ID. So I, I could just use whatever other thing that can uh, bypass the authentication authorization protocol that that it mm -hmm. is really me and mm -hmm. I am the one who has access to this. So yeah, mm -hmm. yeah you're right there. Like emails are, are dying without we even noticing. Yeah, that's right. I mean, uh, but if you register a new email and you don't give your name and surname or what there, uh, but you're still using the same internet and the same device, you're still connected yeah. to the same profile. Yeah. Because uh, what the internet does is that there's already created unique profile identifier to your IP and to your device. Yeah. And it just links up new ones, new ones, new ones, because... If you get a new phone and you link your and you connect with your Wi-Fi, done, boom, you're connected all again. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like it, it cannot, wow. it cannot be a hundred percent sure that it is you, but it, it can uh, connect you or associate you with that device if it's you're using your same Wi-Fi, your same device, or whatever it is, or even the uh, the IP address. And uh, yeah, I believe it was th this kind of uh, 
technology, let's say, was created to avoid SIM swapping in in uh, and other kinds of mm. uh, scams uh, on the internet. Uh, but yeah, and then a lot of even Binance is paying a lot of money for for those kind of things uh, to be able to to understand if this new uh, access that has been created it's not affiliated with another scam before like this let's mm. say uh, the same device or the same uh, internet access that another uh, red flag device showed me so yeah let's this is the why maybe right that we have all of this tracking mm. uh, of our information uh, yeah to avoid uh, these things from happening in the future also but yeah but but it's the things that we are giving uh control of let's say okay i'm gonna give you my my personal data which you're supposed to only use to, to avoid other uh misbehaviors right but but then you're using it to profit yourself and it wasn't the things that we uh, agree on the on the beginning of our relationship mm -hmm. so that's the that's a tricky part there. The, the, actually, the thing is that crypto not being so much KYC uh, and still proven a more, more reliable uh, in regards of like money laundering. We, when we see the percentage with fiat and with like crypto, is a drastic change. Like because the banks, the fiat is much more higher level with money laundering than crypto is. Totally. Uh, of course, justification is we don't see everything. Hey, but in general, is the, it, it, it's actually the same approach. We don't still see the whole bank books, what they're doing, and we'll never know. Only the uh, financial institutions who are overseeing them uh, will see it and pay up some bribe, and that's all. Yeah. Like We'll never see all the so-called historical things there but on blockchain you can see if it's not a private network like secret network or monero so uh, yeah in in terms of that i don't <laughs> there's no justification for such a hard kyc and yeah just it's it's another way how they can control us <laughs> yeah you're right absolutely absolutely well Oscar, thank you so much for coming and talking to us a little bit about privacy and why it's so important to protect it and why everyone should learn a little bit more about their messaging systems that they're using and the email addresses and how all those things work. And we really look forward to seeing what Alter has planned for the future. So thank you once again for coming and talking to us. Yeah, thank you. Thank you as well. Uh, I just want to say that uh, I can leave some alpha in regards of uh, how we're going to get mass adoption. So we're, uh, we have created a new uh, model from the business side okay. as well. But at the same time, we're giving actually kind of almost for free uh, access. It's called stake to access alter. So stake if you access. stake okay. at any validator, for example, on Stick Network, uh, if you meet the so-called threshold of the secret token, uh, you'll be able to log in for free. Wow. As long as you stake. Okay. So login is through Kepler Wallet and we are enabling this approach for hopefully all of the layer ones on Cosmos. So we wow. want to connect all the all the communities inside yeah. Alter. Jesus. Wow. That's amazing. That's very good. That yeah, that's some alpha right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. So go people and Put those and start we have sec we, we, yeah we have secured like I would say decent amount of uh, layer ones already so wow <laughs> so it, awesome. so it's like a it's like a login airdrop <laughs> exactly <laughs> you're onboarding <laughs> people but, you need, yeah. Yeah. You, need but you need to stay yeah you need to stay of course exactly but you're onboarding people so, by their participation yeah. in other networks which. At the same time, we'll bring you a lot of users, and those users are going to be uh, getting like, okay, what is this? Like, curious and using it, and like the, the whole uh, spirit of the of the cosmos. That's uh, yeah. Airdropping. It's yeah. that also. Uh, yeah, 
And that and that means we can onboard shit tons of people from Ethereum side and different other networks outside of Cosmos to just buy some token that you prefer because there's going to be shit tons of layer ones that we support and you can just choose by your interest. If you're price oriented, we're going to say to the people, hey, buy secret and stake and access. Uh, if you're like a gaming guy, uh, join the clan network, buy the clan network native token, stake it and access alter. Uh, if you're a NFT guy, buy and stake Omniflix network. So, and that's how we gonna roll. <laughs> that's gonna be pretty awesome, dude. Good job. Yeah, that's gonna be amazing. That's Thanks. awesome. <laughs> yeah, we we that's we cool. uh, thought about it long, so but we have uh, done a lot of work behind the in the background, so. That's pretty cool. Wow. So yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> Again, thank you guys for having me. Thank you. You're the first one to have this alpha leak, so. <laughs> well, yeah. Thank you, very much thank you so much. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> well, take awesome. care, Oscar. We look seeing to uh, talking to you in the future. Yeah, take care, guys. Take care. Thank you. Ciao. Cool. Bye. Bye.